My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Listen, thank you so very, very much for all of the private feedback on this series that we're doing on 1 Corinthians 15, and especially these word studies. Uh, many, uh, many, many of you have contacted me privately saying, wow, this has just really, really opened my eyes and my mind to realize that Paul was using these words in a way that's completely different from the way that we have been taught traditionally. You know, our responsibility as biblical students is to determine what the original author, what Paul meant when he wrote 2,000 years ago. Our responsibility is not to determine what we can make it mean, nor is it our responsibility or even right to make the words mean something that they did not mean originally. And as in the, when I pointed out, for instance, that Paul, when he said it is sown in dishonor, and then he turns right around and says it is sown in weakness, that he was using a Hebrew parallelism. Well, a Hebrew parallelism simply means that the writer and author was saying the exact same identical thing. He's just using different words. And to, to put a, a completely different definition on the words that he uses is improper in the Hebraic expression of parallelism. Now, I want you to notice that Paul, as he continues his discussion, and I have to tell you, this particular word study was pro, had a profound impact on me many, many years ago when I very first saw it. It was like, oh my goodness. So Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, verse 44 now, we've been looking at verse 43, but he says, it, by the way, that's the body, once again, of verse 35. Someone will say, with what body, singular, do they, plural, come? Now notice, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. Now we're going to spend some time on, on verse 45 for sure, but I, I want you to notice Paul's use of natural versus spiritual. I, I got to tell you, when I was just a young man, 17 or so years old, I was preaching at a little small country congregation in northwest Arkansas, and I went to that verse, and I was applying it referring to the biological body. Well, it's natural, physical, but it will be spiritual. And I went across that, and I talked about how we don't get a physical body back. We get a spiritual body back. And again, I was speaking of the biological body, and I thought I was just preaching straight out of the book. And after the service, one of the elders from that congregation came up to me and said, Young man, if you ever preach that again, you will not be allowed to come back. And I said, What did I say? He said, you, you, you were teaching that we do not get a physical resurrection. I said, Well, yes, sir, but that's what it says there in verse 44. It's so natural, it's raised spiritual. He said, I'm telling you, if you preach it like that again, you will not be allowed back. It will be a physical resurrection, a physical body. I was absolutely stunned. Now, mind you, I had no concept whatsoever of preterism. I thought I understood what natural was, but I didn't. So years later, as I began to investigate the meaning of natural versus spiritual, I was absolutely blown away. The word natural that Paul uses here is sukikos. The word spiritual is nematikos. Now, how does Paul use those words right here in 1 Corinthians 15, or 1 Corinthians? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul says the natural man does not or cannot receive the things of God for their foolishness to him. Wait a minute. The natural man, Sukikon. Are you talking about man biologically? Are you just talking about man in the flesh? Well, if that's what you're going to say, then you have Paul saying 
the ma a man in the physical body cannot receive the things of God because they're foolishness to him. That is not Paul's point. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm going to flip over there. I, I, I want you to catch the power of what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15. He says in verse 11, and he's talking literally about the apostles and what had been revealed to them, but nonetheless he says, What man knows the things of God except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received, and again, he's speaking about the apostles being given direct revelation from the Holy Spirit. We have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. Notice, not knowing versus knowing. Those things we also speak, not in the words which, uh, in, in man's wisdom, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing, what's this, spiritual things, pneumatikos, spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, Sukikon, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually, pneumatikon, discerned. Do you see that Paul is absolutely not referring to a biological body. And oh, by the way, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says, Now, I could not speak to you as to spiritual, pneumaticon, pneumaticos, people, but as to carnal, sarkikos, fleshly. Oh, yeah, we're going to have something to say about that, aren't we? But I hope you can see here. And look. When we come to this word, sukikos, carnal, natural, James uses it in James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Brethren, do not strive against one, uh, each, each other with a mind full of envy and jealousy because this wisdom does not come from above, but it is earthly. Well, there's another word we got to look at. Earthly, sensuous, sensual, Sukikos, and devilish. James is using the identical word. This is how Paul and James use the word. Pneumatikos, spiritual man, is not a man in a non-biological body. Sukikos, the natural man, is not a man in a physical body. Now notice this. Paul says the natural man cannot receive the things of God. Look at what he said in Romans chapter 8, 9 and 11. Those who are in the flesh, flesh, cannot please God. Do you see how Paul is interchangeably using sukikos with sarkikos, or sarkos, flesh? And again, more on flesh as we continue. But once again, folks, we are dealing here with words that have a moral element, that are focused on a life, a realm, a sphere that is opposed to God. The natural man is man opposed to God. A man living like he wants to. A man living as if he were God. And the spiritual man is the man who has given himself, given his heart, given his mind, given his soul to understanding that is submissive to the mind of God. And remember, that's how Paul is using the concept and the concepts in 1 Corinthians 15 when he says the resurrection would be the time of the, of the deliverance from the law that was the strength of sin, the time of deliverance from sin, the sting of death. Well, what is sin? It's the life of the natural man. These are powerful concepts, once again, that are absolutely not focused on, not centered on biological substance, but rather 
stance before God. Oh boy, we've got more. Because after all, Paul talks about the first man, Adam, was earth, earthy. Second man, or the second Adam, a life-giving spirit. He is of heaven. And we're going to see how that is played out in Paul's theology. And even in James chapter 3, when he talks about the sensual knowledge, the psychikos knowledge is earthly. Okay, we've got more. We will see you on the flip side.